Hey class, Mr. G here, going over with how I set up my ceramics classroom for the best. Well, we're just trying to keep everything clean around here, so. Hey class, all right, so today, I keep seeing a lot of questions about how do you guys keep your room clean? How do you take care of cleanup and whatnot in a ceramics classroom? Now, for the majority of us who work in ceramics, we know that keeping the surfaces clean and dust free as much as possible is kind of one of those imperative things. And as we work towards that goal, we need to come up with some different techniques into creating, making sure that we keep the dust at a minimum. Remember, dust for ceramics class is a, is a very hazardous substance. The dust is, it gets in your lungs, it, it's bad for respiratory issues. So trying to keep everything clean as much as possible, as often as possible is an essential thing. Now, one of the things that I do on the ends of my tables, now I got old school science tables, and those science tables are great because uh, it's a formica or uh, masonite kind of tabletop, so it's a good solid stone, which means it's a non-porous substance. Now that non-porous substance does get dust on top of it, but it doesn't seep in and stay in little nooks and crannies. So if you have those, um, some of the formica tabletop pieces, and then once those kinds of flake off, they've got that MDF um, particle board kind of interior. Clay gets in there, dust gets in there, and gets stuck, and also can breed bacteria. There's a bunch of different negatives to doing that. Uh, I'm a big proponent of using a like a stone kind of tabletop. Now, at the ends of the tables, though, I keep a large bucket, five gallon bucket, says clean up on the lid, and in here we have water, lots of water. Now, with now with all that water, what you're gonna need is a couple sponges. Now, the sponges um, just they get grimy over time and you just gotta remember this is clay that's inside the sponge so you can just leave it in the water and it'll pull out. But most of it does come out if you just leave it in the water, let it saturate and let the heavy elements that are in the sponge fall to the bottom. But we keep a five gallon bucket at the end of each of the long tables. Now for me, I got these big, we have these long tables in my room and keep the bucket at the end and then we do a wipe down at the end of each session. However, some art teachers find it easier to um, have like a rent station in the back. And you can do that. I like to keep the movement to a minimum or keep larger uh, buckets of water close by. And so as my students have the tabletops clean, they can clean them at the beginning of class, at the end of class uh, with the rinse buckets. We also don't work on top of the tables. Step number two. Now, step number two is we have these wooden boards. Having the students work on the wood, the wood is porous, so the clay will not stick to it because there's these little air pockets, so it won't leave it, so it won't uh, stick. Uh, whereas with the masonite, it will stick just because there's no air traction to get in between those two. So I always recommend having my students work on their boards. Now for the boards, you don't need to get it, go out and get anything fancy. I mean, you could get a sheet of particle board, MDF, whatever, and have it sanded down nice and smooth. So it looks like, so it looks like this. Now for uh, the particle board piece that we have right here, students can have their clay pieces on this all the way down. Uh, so you can get this larger piece for a larger table and they can work off of in front of it, keep the tools next to them. This is one option. Do I recommend it? Sometimes, it just depends on the project that you're working on. If you're working with a ton of elementary school kids, this might be really good. Make sure you sand the edge down so they don't get little splinters in their little baby hands, but you wanna make sure that you sand down the, down the surface top so it's a nice smooth surface for them to work on and probably a little wider uh, for your students. Now for me, my students, we have enough individual boards that I showed you guys before that I keep stored. There's like a roll cart I keep in the middle of my room and the part and the boards are underneath. Okay, so if you guys have a sink, because some people don't, for my sink setup for keeping that clay thing rinsed out and actually as proper as it possibly can be, is we have a rinse station, the rinse segment. One, we have a clay only sink. So if any kid is working with clay, washing stuff out, they're going to the clay only sink. That just makes sure that it, my other sink, which is for pretty much everything else, stays without any clay add additives in there. Now, a big thing if you, if you guys have a sink is if at the bottom, underneath the sink, there's a clay trap installed. And you can make these or they make, uh, they sell them, which is like a tank that has like a, box inside of it that 
as the water goes through, it does collect clay and sediment and you do have to clean that out periodically. It's really nasty and it really stinks and I really don't like cleaning it out. So I came up with another solution. Even though I have that as a backup, I just don't want to have that run into those issues. Water and in there, they're going to walk, they're going to rinse off all the clay off their hands as much as possible into this bucket first. Then they can finish off rinsing at the sink. Now, if there's glaze cups or whatever that are over here, we do have a rinse bucket for the glaze as well now if they're working with glaze i have another bucket which is just for glaze leftover glaze which we call our swamp water this is where we put our leftover glaze all of our chemicals go directly into this bucket so every so often periodically the students are working with their glaze they'll dump the glaze water in here try and swish it around try and get as much of that glaze stuff out of there into this bucket as possible then i will let this sit for it just kind of sits under the table and periodically once I can, I look in it and I can see that all the sediment has gone to the bottom, all those elements that are in the glaze have gone to the bottom, I'll drain off that top water. And you can do this in the sink or if you want to do it outside, technically it's just gray water and it's just runoff water at that point so you could pour it out. Glaze is put into a bucket, water, rinse water here to rinse off the clay is going into this bucket. Clean hands are to be finely rinsed off in the sink and clean hands like a little clay around the nails and like some dust in here. You're not going to end up having to clean out that sink trap nearly as often. You know, just it's just a lot better to get a system going that keeps it that keeps this rolling. Now, these are just simple techniques that I use to, to help keep my room clean. If you guys have some additional things, throw some stuff down in the comments below. Keep this conversation rolling. One last tidbit that I do have is on the sink that we don't use for clay i keep a hose attached to the nozzle and this is so that i can fill my buckets up faster i can bring buckets over here and just fill them up out of that without having to put the bucket in here which makes work a whole lot easier but you can also but if to clean out the sinks or clean out opposite sinks is a lot easier to clean out with that hose attachment spray balls i keep back here too so that we can kind of keep the usual things that go around the sink all in one place so it's easy to find everything rinse bucket here for it to to if i have a suit that's glazed the bottom of their piece all we have to do is put a little water in here and we keep a sponge in here and just rotate around to wipe those bottoms of their clay pieces as well it's just trying to keep those little tips and tricks to keep your clay studio as clean as possible as well as functional as possible so i hope these tips helped you guys out if you guys have additional tips as i said this is i think the seventh time now put down in the comments below happy to keep that conversation going with you class other than that i will see you guys next class later guys